is the third video. Watch the first two. In this video, I want to show you exactly how the power of darkness, the enemy, influences a believer and everybody in the world. To start with, remember, Lucifer is the second powerful in the hierarchy of power in existence under God. He wants to say, he wants to stay hidden. That's in another dimension or the air or in a different place, not the natural world. Now, your spirit, your consciousness is not natural. When you die, your spirit will go somewhere else, your consciousness. You see, it doesn't die. It's not part of your brain. It's not part of your body. Your brain does all of the functions of the body. But the spirit is your consciousness. Now, here's how it works. You have to understand your spirit is made in the image of God. God is a divine spirit manifested three ways. Your spirit is made in the image of God. So you have a spirit. Now, the power of darkness is a created being called an angel, and he has his hierarchy of fallen angels, and they want to communicate with you. They can communicate with your spirit. By their being in another place called the air, they can communicate with you without you knowing about it by having thoughts come in to your spirit. Now, that is what's called the influence of the power of darkness. Now, how do you stop it? Take no thought, Jesus said. Over and over, take no thought, take no thought, take no thought. Let the mind be in you, that's in Christ Jesus. That is the word. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. Um, okay, so what you do, faith comes by hearing, I'm hearing by the word. You put the word in you, which is Jesus' word. Jesus is the word. He's got more power than Lucifer, who's the second in power, and the darkness, which you can't see, messing with your thoughts. And someone say, oh, that's just crazy talk. No, it's not. Watch cops. Watch people who go crazy in their emotions with thoughts. Listen to them rave and kick. I mean, school, like I said before, school teachers, basketball coaches, um, people you, you, you wouldn't know, grandmas, all cops uh, arresting these people, putting them in the squad car while they're screaming and cussing and raving and kicking the windows. That's not normal. That's not rational. That's not logical. That's not stable. There's something really wrong going on. The power of darkness is controlling that person. Now, I've seen behind the door. Most people, most people have never. They've never really been in there. And what I've seen, I cannot explain it to you in detail. I've been told not to. It is something you would not be able to handle. But let me tell you this. There's only one thing, one thing alone, and that's Jesus that is more powerful than Lucifer. And you're going to serve today whom you choose to serve today. Um, we overcome him. That's Lucifer. By the testimony of our words, the power of the blood of the Lamb, not loving our lives unto death. We have to stand on the power of Jesus because all power has been given to him. And the power under him, the second power over here, is Lucifer who rebelled against Jesus. And the reason why all of this craziness is allowed to be here, he is bringing him a bunch of people together that will worship him and love him. They'll worship him in truth. Now, is this real? Yes, because science can't tell what the conscious spirit is. They don't have a clue. They argue about it's inside the brain. No, it's on the outside of the brain. They don't even know what it is. And of course, the atheists, who I don't agree with, the agnostic, those smart ones, they would say you can't argue with a fallacy from ignorance. And I understand that, and that's true. So I can't prove in science, except I would say, well, I could say the proof is the consciousness. That's the proof. There is a miraculous supernatural, which means not natural, Something on earth we can see and touch. It's our consciousness. And they say, no, that's an argument from ignorance. You don't know what it is and science don't. Well, you're right. Scientists don't know what it is for sure. So they win that argument, but they lose at the same time because the power of darkness is the deciding factor. Now, this is the most important thing about these three videos. Get this. Simplest teaching is the most powerful. The simplest thing is salvation by the cross, by the blood of Jesus Christ, that breaks the power of sin. It forgives us, washes us clean, cleans us, takes away our sin. And we can be free, like Paul said, being free from sin. You have your fruit unto holiness. Now, do you want to be holy? Yes. So you receive the power of the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, and you're walking in the Spirit, and you're not committing sin. So what does that mean? you got a guy in the park who is, who's a drug addict, and he's jacking up heroin. He's going to get nailed with some fentanyl and die. Now, salvation can save that man. He could be saved in an instant, instantly healed. That's instant sanctification from that sin, from the evil world. He can win instantly when the Holy Spirit comes on him. Don't listen to this progressive sanctification lie that people struggle and, and are always sinning and always smoking and always doped up, but they're saved too. No, they're not saved. You're not saved from anger if you're beating everybody up all the time in an angry fit. Use a little common sense. But here's the point. The most common denominator, the simplest thing is the power of the cross. But what's right under it? In power. The power of darkness. If you understand the power of darkness, every wind of doctrine will mean nothing. 
All their vain philosophies mean nothing. I'm going to tell you, the power of darkness is more powerful than people because without the Holy Spirit, you can't stop committing sin. Oh, sin this, sin this. You better believe it's a problem. People commit suicide. People are overdose on drugs. People murder people. All of this is sin. Cussing and calling God dirty names, like I heard the Baptist preacher do when he didn't know I was there. This is all sinful stuff. You can't quit without the Holy Spirit, and here's what divides everything away from the truth. Jesus has the power to control the darkness. If you, I'm going to make a hypothetical scenario, came in contact with a terrorizing devil, all it says in the Bible, it's true, Satan is a murderer. He's a roaring lion going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. If you don't understand the power of Jesus over the darkness, you'll never survive that encounter. I had a member of, of some local charismatic, faith-filled, spirit-filled, member of a church, I asked him, what would you do if you came in contact with a dangerous demonic entity that was intending on killing you? What would you do? He'd say, I fell down on my knees and I asked God to forgive me. I said, you should already be forgiven. You have no idea how to protect yourself from that. If you don't know how to protect yourself from this terrible thing by rebuking it in the name of Jesus, that you say Jesus to that. If you're the real deal, that please. If you're one of every window doctrine or even like this person who doesn't understand this, and you don't, use Jesus, the power of Jesus, as your armor, as your shield of faith. You don't know that. You're not going to make it. So this is the lowest common denominator. The cross, the power of darkness, and Jesus who has been given all power in heaven and earth. So, if he can protect you from something that, in the book of Revelation, is being cast out of the air, Satan is, the dragon, to the earth, and he will torment people. They will pray and they will scream they want to die. God won't let them die. He wants them to do what I just told you. Overcome, repent from sin, and say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, Satan. Get out of my life. He'll flee. And they will, they will come through the tribulation. But we don't have to go into it if we're right with God now. That's real simple. Noah didn't go through it because he was right with God. God said he is a perfect man. Oh, you hate the word perfect? You want to come after me now? You better read the Bible because it said Noah was found perfect in his generation. Why? Because he gave his heart to God. He surrendered. It wasn't because of something he was. It was he gave. He was real. And so God put him in the boat with his immediate family, and put all the animals in there, because let me tell you something, the animals are a whole lot better than a lot of people. And he didn't survive the water. He was on top of the water. The water was judging the ungodly. Noah was on top. What you need to know is, in your spirit, the enemy will try to talk to you. Don't think. Your captive thoughts are gone. Your mind is blank. It's a bad thing to have a blank mind. So you immediately fill it up with the word of God. Because it's sharper than a two-edged sword to fight the enemy when he comes back. And remember, if he has you think something bad, captivate it. Say, get out of here. You haven't sinned unless it manifests in your heart. So what's that mean? That means, okay, I hate somebody and I'm a murderer in my heart. That thought stays in your mind and starts going around and around and you can't quit thinking about it. I hate this person. I'm going to get this person. I'm going to get this. And you're murdering him even if he's not there. And what's it doing? Well, it ain't hurting him if he's not there. But... It is allowing you to let the enemy, the power of darkness, control you. You have to understand the power of the cross, being free from sin, and the absolute threat the power of darkness is to come back in your life and tempt you. And you resist with the power of the Holy Ghost and say the name Jesus. I will not accept this temptation. The Bible says I will not be tempted in a way more than I can find a way to escape from. So I am going to overcome. And you fight the good fight of faith. And when you get this working right, then you find peace and comfort. He's the comforter. You're not going to be tormented. You are going to be a conqueror who goes after the enemy. And it says the devil will flee. The word flee means he runs in terror from the name Jesus. So you have to understand the power of darkness. And you haven't seen behind the door. But you can see the effects on people's lives. And start to walk in faith and go against it and watch how you will overcome. This is so important. This is how you overcome. You go against the power of darkness with the name of Jesus. And you stop sinning because it can't get to you. And you have an advocate if you were to fail, but you better not play games with God. God bless you.